On our last video, we alluded to the fact that there's two different kinds of lava. You got felsic lava and mafic lava. Changing the kind of lava would actually change the kind of explosion or kind of eruption that you're going to see in volcanoes. We'll start by talking about lava flows, which is more common in volcanoes which are a little more mafic than felsic. And these are volcanoes which are common in oceanic hotspots, divergent boundaries, or whenever you have a fissure, a deep fissure that allows lava to rise through a continent without actually merging or melting the surrounding layers and therefore becoming felsic on its way up. And here you see some of these lava flows which we're going to be talking about. And this is what a lot of people associate when they, when they think about volcanoes. And then they also associate the explosive factor and we'll see that on the, on the next part of this as well. So there are two main types of, of this lava flows. One is called Pahoehoe slash AA lava, and the other one is called blocky lava. What you see here is examples of that Pahoehoe lava. So Pahoehoe lava is runny, flowy, ropey-like lava. That's actually what Pahoehoe means. It means lava in the native language of Hawaii. But it means lava, rope-like. Pahoehoe means rope. And so you see that they call that because when the lava is flowing, it makes these rope-like structures. And when it's falling, it's, it actually seems like a rope. And it's very fluid, very mafic, very rich in magnesium. It's the flow, most, most flowy of them all. And it will form com commonly on where the, there's a lot of steep grounds where the lava does not really cool down fast. And it's got a lot of magnesium more than so the silicon inside of it. And so if it flows fast, it cools down slower, and it has a lot of uh, magnesium more so than silicon, you get pahoehoe as a lava flow. If the steepness of the ground is a little slower, allowing the lava to cool down a little more, and maybe the material has a little more silicon than the pahoehoe, you get AA lava, which is still very flowy, but it's a little more blotchy, a little more viscous than pahoehoe lava is, as you see here. And this is, moves a little slower because the steepness of the, of the ground is not too much. And I like this particular picture here, which shows you in the background how you have Pahoehoe lava but on, on the steep mountain. But when it gets down here, it kind of becomes AA lava because it slows down, cools down, and so it, allow, it becomes a little more blotchy. Okay? Now, it's funny about the tiny thing about uh, AA lava is that it moves so slowly that some people in Hawaii will see the AA lava coming, and so it, since it would take like weeks for the lava to actually get to you, they will stay under house until the very last minute, very last week, and then they will finally move out because they want to hold on to their things and where they live, and so they're used to this uh, to actually uh, the way the lava flow is moving and stuff like that. But there are some areas of Hawaiian shield volcanoes where the lava is moving fast through those pahoehoe things. And remember, you also have underground magma chambers where the lava is flowing incredibly fast as well because it's not being slowed down by, by, the, by all the things they have to go through in the land and all the obstacles and all that stuff. Now, um, if it's a little colder even and it has even more silicon, it's going to be very, very sticky, but it's still a lava flow. You call that blocky lava like you see here. And the cool thing about blocky lava is it kind of moves like it's like a in, in bunches. It goes, whoop, whoop, whoop. it goes into these sudden block movements all at once, and it creates these blocks of rock which move across the surface, and they're very hot rock, and they cause things that look like landslides and things like that. And we call that blocky lava. And that's even more slow than AA lava is. And it might take months for this lava to move even an inch. And that's why it cools down a lot. Um, and actually looks like rock. And you'll be surprised to find that it's actually slow moving lava already. Now, one other special type of lava flow that's happening in the middle of the divergent boundaries especially or underwater volcanoes such as seamounts is going to be mafic lava which quickly solidifies because it's hitting the water so it solidifies almost instantly and forms something that we call pillow lava this will also happen whenever you have on a sealed volcano uh, underwater um, volcanic vent basically or a parallel sill where it actually takes this lava directly to the ocean and then when it hits the ocean it, it kind of solidifies instantly you should see a video of this so you can get a little better idea of it but then it makes this weird pillow like structures which thousands of years later might be uplifted and become visible at a shoreline 
and that's what we call pillow lava or lava that forms when lava cools very quickly at the bottom of the ocean. So the kinds of lava flows you will get will depend on the composition of the lava. If it has more silicon, it becomes a little more viscous and more towards blocking than pahoe hoe. The steepness of the, of the ground that it's going through and the obstacles that it has to go through also affects the kind of lava because if it's too steep, it will go faster and slow down and cool down slower and then become more pahoe hoe. But if the opposite happens, it will tend to be a little more AA lava or even blocky lava. So these are the lava flow volcanoes. And the lava flow volcanoes are characteristic because they're not as explosive as the next kind that we're going to be talking about. But remember, you might still get some ejections of lava or large explosions if for some reason there's gathering of water or gases in that particular volcano but even those explosions won't be pyroclastic they'll be more like jets of lava just squirting through up like you see in that picture there all right on the other hand felsic viscous volcanoes which would have high gas contents tend to become explosive volcanoes and we call those pyroclastic explosions and some of them even have lava but the majority of them will make big plumes of ash and gas and hot searing clouds of of lava exploding from the center of the volcano these are massive massive explosions you have to watch videos of this to really see what i'm talking about and lots of interesting things will be happening in a volcano like this okay um first of all it will cause crystallization of minerals and that's what we call glass crystallization because the magma cools down very fast and then as it explodes in a split second all the hot stuff will cool down as it hits the upper layers of the atmosphere and it will sh send throughout the earth tiny microscopic pieces of glass that cover the entire area that near the volcano and so these will spread minerals all over the surface and some minerals will actually form underneath the surface and so a lot of different minerals are going to be available because of volcanic eruptions. And another thing that's interesting about these explosive eruptions is that they make these things called pyroclastic materials. Now, you probably heard about the clouds of dust that comes out of these volcanoes. The tiniest, tiniest materials, which you see here on the top right, are called fine lichor volcanic ash, that we call it dust, volcanic dust, and those are particles less than 0.25 millimeters of diameter. They're very, very tiny. As they start becoming a little bigger, we call them volcanic ash, and you'll see an ash cloud on the left top bottom here. And this ash cloud will spread ash and dust across the surface and cause complete coverage with ash, like you see up here on the right side. Now, if you get a little bit bigger, by the way, volcanic ash is until 2 millimeters. Bigger than that, until about 64 millimeters, you have something that's called dactyketic or rhyolitic lapilli or basaltic lapilli. Now, notice that lapilli will be, in general, anytime you have small chunks of rock that come out of the volcano. So this is bigger than dust, bigger than ash. It's going to be called lapilli. Now, if the lapilli is a little more mafic in composition, we're going to call it basaltic and or andersitic, which is the intermediate lava, right? If it's a little more... Felsic in composition, it's going to be a little lighter and it's going to be called light dactatic or rhyolitic lapilli. And sometimes we call that pumice rock if it has vesicles inside of it, which will be the case usually because it's going to be full of those pockets that we talked about when I showed you the other, the other picture on the video. Uh, now, if the lapilli becomes larger to the point that's above 64 millimeters, we no longer call it lapilli, we call it basaltic bombs and these bombs are large chunks of rock you see them right here and right here and these are large chunks of rock sometimes they can be the size of a basketball or even bigger than that uh, but normally they're like size of potato shaped lumps of rock and they get projected from the volcano and these are basically like chunks of lava that fly through the air and solidify on their way down as they hit things and the most scared of them all are called pyroclastic blocks and pyroclastic blocks are ginormous pieces of rock ejected from the volcano you see one right here at the bottom you see the size of the person and the size of the block this is one big chunk of rock that was thrown from the volcano and landed somewhere and sometimes it actually is melted in midwear air and it's mostly solidified before it hits the ground but sometimes it's still kind of um fluid and as it, as it hits the ground you see a lot of that in movies like 2012 and other things like that and these are amazing um, 
things because volcanic eruptions will throw these pyroclastic materials miles away from the actual volcano. Sometimes the volcanoes will explode with so much power that these rocks will actually be thrown into outer space and end up in other planets. We actually have rocks on Earth, which are meteorites coming from Mars. And they came from ancient volcanic eruptions that actually took place in Mars. And so pyroclastic materials can travel thousands of miles away. And ash can in fact cover the sunlight by creating a ginormous cloud that blocks the sunlight. Which is what caused, by the way, the permanent extinction because a super, super, super duper massive volcano. And actually a series of super massive volcanoes exploded and covered the entire Earth with ash and caused the death of all the producers and then subsequently the one of the biggest biggest extinctions that ever happened on the earth now pyroclastic flows include several things the pyroclastic cloud itself which is what you see in these pictures and the cloud that actually goes higher to the atmosphere is called the panache all right and the cloud that comes towards you and near the ground is called pyroclastic uh, cloud Sometimes the pyroclastic cloud will contain superheated materials or superheated blocks of dust, ash, lapilli, bombs, or even blocks in it. And those superheated blocks will actually burn anything on their path. And we call that Nur Adente. And you must have seen it in movies like Volcano if you, or Dante Speak. If you've never seen it, pick up a copy. And this massive wall of, of lava and hot searing um, pyroclastic materials will come towards you and erase and blow everything in its path in a shock wave that, that is very, very destructive. Sometimes this pyroclastic flow will actually rain down um, on the surface and mix in with water to fall these massive landslides of pyroclastic material mixed in with water that we call lahar. And this lahar will actually cause massive destruction and flooding of the surface as well. And it's very common among pyroclastic explosions. It's also featured in the movie Dante Speak. So you can definitely watch that and see how destructive it can actually be. All right? So we'll end this video here. In the next video, we're going to talk about the different types of volcanoes that form in the surface of the Earth.